Hi, my name is Dr. Lee Mancini. I'm the Chief of the Division of Sports and Exercise Medicine at the UMass Chan Medical School and the UMass Memorial Health Center. I'm the Director of the UMass Primary Care Sports and Exercise Medicine Fellowship and an Associate Professor in the UMass uh, Department of Family Medicine and Community Health. Today, I'm going to be talking about three common appearances and locations of OCD lesions. This is part of the AMSSM FM radiology project. I have nothing to disclose. Our objectives today are to learn about three common OCD lesion sites, to discuss characteristics x-ray findings of these three OCD lesions, and to discuss clinical co correlation conditions of these three OCD lesions. Our first area to discuss is a Taylor dome OCD of the ankle joint. Typically, when you're getting x-rays of the ankle, you always want to get them weight-bearing, and you want to get three views, an AP view of the ankle, an oblique view of the ankle, and a lateral view of the ankle. The bottom left view is your AP ankle view. The middle x-ray is your oblique ankle x-ray, and the far right is your lateral ankle x-ray. Again, when you're looking at the Taylor dome, that is usually the top part of the talus underneath the tibia and medial to your fibula and specifically the lateral malleolus. The most common site of a Taylor dome OCD is that medial aspect of the talus right lateral to the medial malleolus of the tibia. So this is where you would look on an AP view of the ankle is where that line is with the Taylor dome lesion. On an oblique view, which sometimes gives you your best view of a Taylor dome OCD, you can see inside this red circle, a lucency consistent with or suspicious for a Taylor dome OCD. And again, this is right along that medial aspect of the talus, again, just lateral to that medial malleolus coming off the tibia. On a lateral ankle view, it can be a little bit harder to see, but again, you're trying to evaluate in this lateral view, the contour of the Taylor dome in particular on that lateral ankle view. And on this lateral ankle view, you can clearly see the navicular bone in front of the talus, the calcaneus below the talus, and then your tibia and your fibula. The most common mechanism of injury of a Taylor dome OCD is an acute traumatic lateral ankle sprain where you have an inversion injury. What happens is if this is your, um, is this is your, your talus here and this is your tibia, as you have an inversion injury and the lateral aspect goes out, the medial aspect of the talus goes up and bangs. And that's where you, where you see it typically where that medial talus bangs into the medial tibia. Um, also, common physical exam findings may be an ankle effusion or an athlete complaining of, complaining of an inversion injury where those lateral ligaments are, are stretched and injured, but after that lateral pain resolves from those ligaments being sprained, they have persistent medial and or medial anterior ankle pain on that medial side of the tibia and the talus where there was no acute direct trauma. MRI is usually used for staging of an osteochondral defect. The treatment tends to be um, based on the staging of it, whether it's a surgical versus conservative. Uh, and again, usually you'll put the patient in a cam walker boot and on crutches to unload the ankle joint. Here are two MRI images. Again, this is beyond the scope of this radiographic project, but it's important to understand that you need to get an MRI to further stage the Taylor Dome OCD. And again, on the image on the left, you can see that bright white area where that OCD lesion is. On the right, you can see a lateral view and you can see that black area where that Taylor dome osteochondral defect is. The second location uh, for OCDs in the body that we see are fe the femoral condyle OCD in the knee joint. Now on the knee, we typically are getting four views, an AP view, a notch or tunnel view a lateral view, and a sunrise view. And again, for knee films, you want to get these weight bearing as well because it provides some additional information. Your sunrise view is in the top right. Lateral view is in the bottom left. 
to the right of the lateral view is the tunnel view. And then the far bottom right, you can see an AP view where we see both knee joints at the same time. So when you're looking at an AP view, <clears throat> the most common site for a femoral condyle OCD is in that medial condyle. You can see that top right x-ray showing where you see that lucency, where the arrow is pointing, you can see the osteochondral defect and this dark lucency underneath it. In the bottom left image, you can see on an AP view a lucency where that blue arrow is pointing for an osteochondral defect of the femoral condyle. On the notched view, sometimes also you can see, again, on the bottom left is a normal x-ray where you can see the smooth contours of the lateral and medial femoral condyles, where on the right, you can see again, this irregularity where the arrow is pointing, the greenish blue arrow, um, and just next to it, you can see that, that scalloped out appearance. Again, on the lateral view, on the right, you have a normal lateral view. On the left, where you have the black arrows, you can see a faint dark line, uh, which forms the contour of that OCD of the femoral condyle. So these are your typical findings that you're gonna see on these views. And on the sunrise view, the last view, sunrise view, because the patella is the sun coming up between the two mountain peaks of the femoral condyles, you have a normal sunrise view on the right. And on the left, again, you can see this translucent appearance um, where all these four black arrows are consistent with a femoral condyle OCD. Common patient demographics, um, femoral condyle OCDs are are, are common. They're an acquired reversal idiopathic condition, more common in boys than girls. About 25% of the time, if you find a femoral condyle OCD, they end up being bilateral. Um, as I said earlier, the medial femoral condyle is the most common site in the knee joint. Between the ages of 12 and 19, it's about twice as common as in being found in kids under the age of 11. Again, 22 out of 100,000 for ages 12 to 19 and nine to 100,000 in kids under the age of 11. Again, common presentation can really vary from just vague pain to complaining of some mechanical symptoms, locking in the knee, catching, pain with activity. But the most common finding is a lot of recurrent joint effusions without any true history of trauma. Um, so again, on physical exam, usually we'll find a knee joint effusion. There can be pain on palpation, over that medial femoral condyle or over the location of the OCD, and they walk with an limp, so they have an antalgic gait. Again, like with Taylor Dome OCDs, we always get an MRI to stage the lesion, and the treatment is based on the size, location, stability, and the patient's symptoms. Typically, the first-line treatment is non-weight-bearing and activity restriction, so you put them on crutches. Again, if it's unstable lesion or a higher stage lesion, we send them to surgery. And here are a few MRI findings. If you look at the bottom right, you can see again where the black arrow is, that medial femoral condyle OCD. In the middle, again, a darker view where the bone is white. And then the far left, again, these two red arrows, femoral condyle OCD. The last one is gonna be a capitellar OCD of the elbow. Typically we get three elbow views uh, for x-rays of the elbow, an AP view, an oblique view, and a lateral view. Here, the AP view is on the far right, the oblique view is in the middle, and the lateral view of the elbow is on the far left. On that capitellar OCD, typically you're gonna see that the capitellum is on the distal aspect of the humerus on the opposite side of the radial head. It's at the radial capitellar joint. On the right, you have a normal AP view. And on the left, you can see that lucency on the capitellum consistent with an OCD. On the oblique view, again, on the left x-ray, you have a normal radiocapitellar joint. And on the right, where you have uh, the bluish green arrow pointing to the irregularity of the capitellum and the OCD. On the lateral view, again, probably the hardest view to see um, usually it's much easier to see on the AP and oblique views in the x-rays of the elbow. You have a normal lateral elbow x-ray on the right. And on the left image, you see where the white arrow is pointing to just a little bit of lucency 
um, but again, difficult to see on the on the lateral view of the elbow. So typically common presentations for the patients and physical exam findings are lateral elbow pain, um, some swelling uh, that the patients will describe. Sometimes the patients can have even, you can palpate and feel it, an elbow joint effusion. Typically they'll have a loss of full extension and sensations of locking or catching in the, in the elbow. This is very common in, in adolescent athletes, specifically repetitive overhead or upper athletes and upper extremity weight bearing activities. So baseball players, tennis um, athletes, gymnasts uh, get this a lot. And a lot of times in gymnasts, it can be bilateral um, strength training and weightlifting. You can see this. Um, and typically the age of presentation is anywhere from as young as age 11 to around early 20s. Boys get this more than girls. Dominant elbow is much more common than a non-dominant, especially in unilateral sports like baseball, uh, tennis, softball. Um, but about 20% of the time, it can be uh, bilateral. Um, and you want to think about this bilaterally in, in weightlifters and in gymnasts in particular. As we've said already with the other two common OCDs, MRI is used for staging of a, a capitellar OCD as well. Again, this guides our management, whether it's conservative or surgical. Again, the treatment depends on size, location, staging of the lesion, and how stable the lesion is. On the bottom left MRI, again, where that red arrow is, you can see a capitellar OCD. And again, that's, that's looking at a coronal slice of the MRI. On the right, you can see a sagittal slice. And again, you can see uh, that OCD lesion on the distal humerus, just above the radial head. You see the fluid behind the image and the small piece for the capitellar OCD. So in summary, three common OCD lesion sites, Taylor dome in the ankle, femoral condyle in the knee, and a capitellar OCD in the elbow. Thank you so much.